Fields of Mystria is a brand new farming game that was recently released for early access on Steam that follows you, a brand new adventurer, as you are introduced to the magical village of Mystria while you farm, fish, mine, make relationships, and more. I'm Junimo B, and as the name would imply, I spend the majority of the time on my channel focusing on Stardew Valley, my most favorite game I've ever had the pleasure of playing so far. And in all honesty, I really haven't been too drawn to other farming sims in particular since I discovered Stardew Valley quite a few years ago. However, Fields of Mysteria has seemed to become a standout already for so many in the Stardew community alone, so after being inundated with copious amounts of Fields of Mysteria videos on my recommended page, I couldn't help but want to see for myself. And it looks like the majority of you were interested too. So today I am very excited to play Fields of Mysteria for the first time with all of you, where we'll see if it lives up to the hype, and I'll definitely be going over how it stacks up to Stardew Valley in my eyes. But remember, this game is still in early access, meaning that the game is actively evolving and is still in development. Now, speaking of Stardew Valley, I am kind of too much of a control freak to go into this game completely blind on camera, and I just thought it would be fun to get some early game advice from some of my Stardew Valley creator friends who have already dabbled a bit in the fields of mystery and magic. So before I started playing, I reached out to five awesome Stardew creators for their biggest pieces of advice or any advice they would give to somebody playing from the beginning for the first time. And here's what they said. First up, a creator I've had on my channel before, Melonslord. She makes some short form content and streams over on Twitch and here's the advice that she gave me. I think that using your Stardew brain is super helpful, not in the way of comparing it to Stardew, but in the ways you play. There are lots of quests and stuff, so try to keep a few things around if you can, and with the museum you do have to donate things still. Also, the map is a little tricky at first, but I try to map it in my head instead of using the actual map except to find NPCs. I'm pretty new to it, so I don't have a lot of advice, but just enjoy it. It's pretty fast-paced in my opinion, but I like it that way, and you'll definitely have time to do things. Oh, and passing out really doesn't have any negative effects as of right now. If you've seen a short-form Stardew speedrunning series where each video consists of speedrunning a random Stardew item, you may know this next creator, Tree and Thania. His advice was as follows. Try to donate things to the museum as much as you can, as well as quests to get your renown up so that you can unlock the mines really quickly. Also, make sure to stockpile 60 wood and 60 stone as you'll need it for an early quest. And if you do it quick enough, you can reap the rewards the very first week of the game. Also, if you can, avoid spending 500 tesserae on a fishing rod as you can make a copper one for 4 copper bars and you can use the money on other things. Now let's take a quick break from the advice and get started in Fields of Mystria. Don't worry, we'll hear from the rest of the starting creators very soon. The game opens on a conversation between brother and sister Island and Adeline where they're discussing the town's revitalization plan as the town has recently been struck by an earthquake and caused quite a bit of damage throughout, including causing people to leave and as a result it's left them with fewer helping hands to bring it back to its former glory, which is when Adeline proposes the idea to put out a notice to the Adventurers Guild in the capital about recruiting somebody to come aid the town in exchange for farmland with such potential. And this is where we come in. Now that we've got the premise of why we're moving to this new place and what our overarching objective is, we now get to the fun part, what I was very excited about coming into this game, the character customization. I can already see some things that I'm very excited about that Stardew Valley does lack, but before we get into that, let's hear a few more pieces of advice from some Stardew friends. Blinksy is a cozy speedrunner over on Twitch and she's recently been playing some Fields of Mystria, so here's the advice that she gave me. Donate everything you find and keep at least one of everything. The best way to make money starting off is completing some random tasks for NPCs as they give you monies for recipes. Secondly, save your food to cook so that you can make a profit. The meals cost way more than the ingredients and it's another way to make monies. Selling a crop of the season will automatically give you a recipe in the mail another day so it's best not to bulk sell and make profit from the recipe. Third, talking to NPCs when they're in groups also counts as friendship XP so it's a good way to gain friendship points with everyone fast. You may know this next creator, the Data Wizard from Instagram or TikTok, where they enjoy info dumping about games like Stardew through their short form content, and they have recently made some videos on Fields of Mysteria, so here was their biggest piece of advice to me. Renown is important as the game gates certain features behind it, so doing quests, selling stuff, or completing the museum, which is a hybrid of the community center and Stardew with the museum and Animal Crossing, all are important as they increase renown. As far as I can tell, the museum is not essential at all, but it is an easy way to rack up renown. 
From there, you can power game renown, as when you get to cooking level 6, you can buy flour at 200 apiece, make bread and sell it for 190, almost a refund, and increase your renown as you do so, so that you can quickly gain access to animals, for example. Now, with all of that info, I'm just going to take a moment to let that all sink in before hearing our final piece of advice as we dip back into the character creation. As I was saying previously, there are a few things I noticed right off the bat that Stardew is lacking, and that's the pronoun option and the birthday section. Seriously, the ability to add a birthday for me is so incredibly exciting, and the inclusivity with pronouns is a really nice feature. As far as the aesthetics of the player, I'm not in love with it yet, but things tend to grow on me, so we shall see. Something that did bother me though was that although the clothing items and hair options were all flat colors, they only gave you a select number of options whereas I definitely would have preferred a color wheel of some sort or even just the same type of colors across the board. I know this is a me problem, but not having the same or even a really similar color option for my hair and my outfit, for example, really did bug me. It's not a big deal, but I figure I'm just gonna put all my thoughts out there and that's how I feel. I do really like the vast number of accessory options, and I think that the inclusion of a hijab in particular is really special and unique, so I definitely commend them for that. And here is what my little sprite looks like. I'm hoping maybe we can change some things along the way because I'm not sure I'm in love with her yet, but we are going to jump in and really start the game now, right after we hear one last piece of creator advice to send us off. I know that many of those who watch my content are already familiar with her, and somehow I get comments all the time confusing the two of us, but Lumi is a great Stardew creator who's got you with her short-form Stardew Valley videos on TikTok and YouTube, and here's the advice she had for me heading into Fields of Mystery up for the first time. To be honest, I didn't get very far in, so I won't be much help gameplay-wise, but I will say that you should take your time to read all of the dialogue and interact with as many NPCs as you can. The NPC dialogue is super cute because they interact with each other a lot more than other farming sims I've played, so reading all the dialogue made my experience more fun if that makes sense. Oh, and don't fall in love too quick. All the datables are immaculate, so you must choose wisely. Choose March. I will say that this last piece of advice was kind of refreshing as it wasn't too data heavy and was pretty easy to understand. So here are my key takeaways from everybody's advice. Number one, use my Stardew brain, and be a hoarder so that I'm able to donate things and bring up my renown, which I'm sure I'll understand better once we get started. Number two, the NPCs are important for a multitude of reasons, so I need to be sure to interact with them, complete quests, and pay attention to their dialogue because it's cute, thought out, and will bring up XP. And third, keep an eye out for March because Lumi said so. Let's get into it! So already, first walking into Mystria, we can see the destruction from the earthquake and we are greeted by a new face, Baylor. Didn't expect to see anyone else out this way. The roads have been a real mess since the earthquake. I'm Baylor, a traveling merchant. Pleased to meet you. Let me guess, you're here at Lady Adeline's request. There was something about free land and a house. I wish this was an offer I could get in real life. I've seen the area. It's a lovely spot quite close to town. I'll walk with you the rest of the way if you don't mind the company. No wagons can get through since the bridge collapsed, so I've had to carry what I can on foot. So already, it's looking like we're able to hop around in this game, which is a very cool addition. Lord Island, look who I found on the edge of the forest. B, I presume? Welcome, welcome. You're in good hands, B. I'm off to the inn. It's been a long day and I need a hot meal. I'll see you around. Oh my gosh, the little wave goodbye. It looks like this is going to be my house and little farm. The art style here is so reminiscent of early Pokemon games, like the color of the grass, the way the trees are drawn, and even the way the house is designed just feels pretty familiar to me. Welcome to your new home. How cozy. Would you like a tour of the room? Yes, please. This here is your diary. You can write in it when you want to record your story, and this, of course, is your new bed. Make sure you get to sleep by 2am each day to keep your stamina up. We've also put this calendar up for you. You can use it to check when Mystria holds festivals and to check when everyone in town's birthdays are. And this storage chest here was made by Mystria's very own carpenter, Rias. You can store items here. And that's about it for your tour. I thought you might be hungry when you got here, so I stopped by the inn and picked you up a bowl of their famous vegetable soup. Welcome to Mystria B. We're so glad to have you. And to sleep we go. Okay, so here's our first real day. Thoughts so far, the saving at the journal feels very Harvest Moon. We've met a few people, I'm interested to see how many villagers there are total, and I can't figure out how to pick up this chest. Oh, and another cutscene. Ah, uh, hello, you must be B. I'm Celine. it's so nice to meet you. 
Okay, so this is a character that they've put in the majority of their promotional material, so I'm really interested to see what kind of impact she has on the game or if they just thought she was cute. I hope you'll consider growing lots of flowers. Thank you, I love flowers. Whoa, okay. Morning, neighbor. The name's Hayden. I run Sweetwater Farm to the west. You don't gotta tell me your name, B. You're already the talk of the town. Hmm, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, maybe it's just me, but imagine showing up at a new town and everybody just knows you. I personally feel like that would be super intimidating. <laughs> Need any pointers on getting started with your field? I'd love some tips. Okay, so already I feel like this game is a lot more hand-holding than Stardew. Like, you'd never see this kind of step-by-step -by, -step by a Stardew NPC. So we now have a hoe and a watering can thanks to Hayden and Celine and some plants, so I think it only makes sense to plant them and I'm just going to clear out this area surrounding as much as I can with the tools I have because if it's similar to Stardew, I really don't want to have any overgrown situation going on. That being said, I'm not sure how I feel about not having all of my tools to start out. I assume I need a pickaxe for these rocks or an axe for the wood, but I'm not really sure how to get them at this point, so let's go explore. Here's Hayden's farm. It seems very animal oriented, kind of seeming like he's serving as the Marnie of Mystria, where you can buy animals and such. Also, this seesaw for chickens? You've got my attention. And just to be clear when I'm saying things like, this character feels similar to this person in Stardew Valley, I am not saying they're copying them or anything negative. I did the same thing in my head when I played Stardew Valley for the first time, comparing it to my experience with Harvest Moon. It's really just an observation, and I guess it's kind of my way of trying to understand the game, if that makes any sense. Okay, so we've come across another home. Errol seems to have taken his museum curator work home with him. Interesting. Cute little house. I feel like the names in this game so far are a little difficult to figure out the proper pronunciations. Oh, and here's Errol. Hello, are you the new farmer everyone's been talking about? I hear you'll be helping to raise Mystria's renown. How splendid. It seems we share a common goal. You can call me Errol. I'm the curator of Mysteria's brand new museum. I hope you'll consider donating some items. It's a great way to earn renown. Oh, I know, Errol. I know. You'll even receive rewards for each collection you complete. I'll be rooting for you, B. And we already have three items to donate. Nice. I assume maybe when we complete collections, some rooms will open? Not quite sure. So apparently we can swim in this game. I'm curious if it's going to be similar to Animal Crossing New Horizons where you can dive and catch things in the water? Okay, so we're finally meeting Adeline in town because I definitely didn't forget that that was what I was supposed to do today. Hi there, Bee. I was hoping I'd run into you. Your timing is perfect. I'm sure you're eager to start helping Mystria and its citizens, so I'm here to tell you about our town's request board. Come with me. It's a great way to earn money, equipment, and most importantly, renown. There's that word again. Ah uh, yes, let me explain the basics. As you know, Mystria is just one of the many towns that make up the Kingdom of Aldaria. All of them receive a town rank according to their renown level. Towns with a higher town rank enjoy more popularity and more support from the capital. I'm sorry, but every time they talk about the capital, I keep thinking about this as the Hunger Games. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead now and accept your first request? It's one I just put up for you. Greet the townsfolk. Introduce yourself to all the townsfolk and then talk to Adeline. Your map can help you locate everyone. And from there, we get some potato seeds and some tesere, which appears to be the town's currency. Good to know. Another townsperson. Val? Valen? Valen? Okay, the Harvey of the town. I wonder how much she charges you. Then we've got Juniper, who runs the bathhouse. Interesting. She seems a little... mean. I'm not sure how I feel about her so far. And here's the general store. It's already getting late, so I'm not sure how much more I can see before the night's over. Also, I am curious if I ever get a light source because it is getting fairly dark. Also, speaking of Juniper, here's her bathhouse. It's very pink, and there's a puppy! His collar says Dozy. Good boy, Dozy. Okay, I kind of love that. This town feels very large so far. I'm kind of lost, but here's the blacksmith shop, and there's someone here. Perfect. Oh my gosh, it's March. Okay, okay. The name's March. What do you want? I'm B, the new farmer in town. I don't see what that has to do with me. Regardless of what Adeline says, we really don't need an outsider to come in and solve our problems for us. Just don't get in the way. Um, okay, well this kind of checks out for Lumi if I'm honest. She's a big Haley fan and March is definitely giving the same vibes. Honestly though, March kind of reminds me of Nami from Harvest Moon, if anybody knows who that is. She was always my favorite though. Now it might just be the red hair, but Nami was always like kind of the cold, romanceable character and March is giving me the same feeling. 
Uh, okay, somebody is sleeping here. Let me just introduce myself to the guy in his bed because that totally makes sense. Whoa, are you the new farmer everybody's been talking about? The one who's come to help out the town? That's super cool. Nice to meet you, B. The name's Ulrich. My brother and I live at the blacksmith's. I hope we can be friends. Okay, I like this guy. Lumi can keep Marge and I think I'll go for his brother. Okay, B from the future chiming in here. I'm devastated. Okay, that's a bit dramatic, but at this point in the playthrough, I haven't realized the purpose of the little symbols next to the NPC's names, but the dateable characters have a little heart, and the non-dateable characters have a circle. So, to be clear, March has a heart, but his more friendly brother Ulrich does not. I don't think I can forgive this game for that. But anyway, back to the game. It may be getting a little late, but I did find this little house, and Celine lives here. Her house is super cute, covered in plants, which honestly, I love. And with that, we have completed our first full day in Fields of Mystria. The next day, I was able to receive an axe from Island to chop down a tree on my farm to discover this dragon statue, which meant I could finally collect wood, and I think I spent a bit too much time doing so. I continued exploring and foraging around the town. Errol discussed the museum further with me. I assume I was supposed to spend more of the first day in town meeting people and discover the museum today, but oh well. I also found this little dig site, which was very reminiscent of Harvest Moon to me, and for the rest of the night I tried to familiarize myself with the map a bit more, and in doing so, discovered the beach area. That night, after tucking into bed, I did get a bit of a scare from the dragon statue we had discovered earlier in what felt like a dream, but apparently wasn't one. Calderas is apparently the guardian of Mystria, who's only now reawakened after some time thanks to us repairing their shrine, and they requested that we collect a magical essence as an offering to them to regain their strength, which we'll be able to find through completing daily tasks. Day 3, I spent more time foraging and gathering wood, and then went to meet Adeline and some others to discuss the bridge repair on the bridge east of town. And this is where I was reminded of Trian's advice, as this was the quest I needed to donate the 60 wood and 60 stone. Unfortunately, up to this point, I still hadn't really figured out how to get myself a pickaxe, but I had been collecting wood, so there was that. On the way through town, I met Elsie, Adeline and Island's aunt, who seems to be the self-proclaimed town gossip, and Terithia, who runs the tackle shop on the beach. Later in the day, I met Landon, the retired owner of the carpenter shop, which I then visited to find that this is where I would need to go in order to start the decorating process on my farm, which was personally something I really wanted to spend more time on. Although honestly, these purchase menus were really intimidating at this point, and I was still having a bit of a hard time understanding it all. As night was approaching, I figured I'd finally take a look at the map to see what else I could do in the day, and found some use in the feature that shows where villagers are, with those I hadn't met yet being grayed out and a big clump of grey people were at this one location, so I made my way there to hopefully make some more progress on the meeting people quest. I was lucky enough to meet Maple, Del, Luke, Holt, and Nora, who were all there having a meal at the Sleeping Dragon Inn. And afterwards, I introduced myself to Reyna, whose family owned the inn, and with that I went back to the farm for the night. Now that I was feeling a little more settled in the game, I decided on day 4 that I would take a good look at each section of the menu to get a better understanding of everything. This may seem silly that I hadn't looked more into all of the sections earlier, but what can I say? Sometimes when playing something for the first time, it's a bit chaotic. At least for me. And while doing this, I finally realized that Ulrich was not a dateable townsperson, so that was unfortunate. But I did get a bit of a better grasp on some more aspects of the game, and decided I should make some more progress on the quests I had accepted, so to the town I went. In the inn, I met Josephine, who runs the inn with her husband, and I also decided to try gifting to the townspeople with the berries that were all over Mystria, and people seemed to like them so far. At the quest board, I noticed that there were three available quests, and excitingly, one of the quests was to talk to Ulrich to get a worn pickaxe. As I was saying earlier, I needed that desperately to get stone, so that was very nice to see. There was also a request from Reyna to bring her blueberries for the blueberry jam recipe, as well as a quest to talk to Luke at the inn to receive a worn neck. I know I was saying earlier about how I was frustrated that I didn't start with all of the tools I needed, but I think this is a fine alternative. It really seems like a way to get you immersed in the town even if you wouldn't naturally do so. I also met Hemlock, Josephine's husband, in the general store to finally complete the Greeting Everyone's quest, and I noticed that I had some rewards available in this little box here. I guess these rewards are from leveling up in certain areas, but at the time I definitely thought that it was my prize for completing the quest. After gifting Selena flower, I remembered that I really needed that pickaxe, so I headed up to the blacksmith's shop and ran into March. I did try to gift him a berry like I had for many others, but he was less than impressed. Lovely. 
I was able to pick up the pickaxe from Ulrich though and decided to be respectful in my conversation with him as I had now learned that he was emotionally unavailable. And he continued to remind me of that as he basically pitched his brother to me. So that's great. Soon after, I found Adeline and received the real reward for completing the meeting people quest, and then completed the quest to meet Luke in the inn to receive a net. I will say that this is an addition to the game that I'm pretty excited about. Now that I had a pickaxe, I could finally work on finishing the bridge repair, so I spent the rest of the evening and the rest of my energy for the day collecting stone, and I even caught my first bug, a roly-poly. Day 5 was a Friday, which is apparently a big day for the Sleeping Dragon Inn, as there would be a gathering of all the townspeople there that evening. But before then, I needed to finish gathering stone to follow Trian's advice and get the bridge request complete in week 1. And we did it! I'm thinking that the reaping of rewards he may have been referring to is this Saturday market Adeline is talking about, so that will be interesting to see tomorrow. After the bridge was repaired, I ran into Island in March and figured I'd try my hand at a new gift this time around. And, could you guess it, March was once again less than impressed. I also ran into Hayden and Errol on the way through town, and Errol dropped some big information on me that I could strike furniture with a pickaxe to move it. And after my whole annoyance day one on not understanding how to move my chest, this was some exciting info to learn. I did stop by to talk to Ulrich in the blacksmith's shop, and he made sure to let me know that I shouldn't be judging March by his first impression. Or his second, or even his third. So, that's something. I also made some donations to the museum, and now that I had a pickaxe, I figured it may come in handy for the dig site I had seen earlier, so I headed there to check it out. And it turns out it was helpful because I was able to discover some artifacts for the museum collection. I was also able to catch a pond skimmer with the net, which was fun, and then it was time to meet everyone at the inn for the Friday night festivities. And I'm gonna say it now, Lumi was very much right about the NPCs and their dialogue, not only to you, but with each other, because this evening at the inn was actually incredibly fun to interact with everyone. I started by talking to this first table where they were playing Dragons and Drama, a fun play on Dungeons and Dragons, and being someone who has played D&D myself, the conversations felt very familiar and well-written, and I kind of loved it. I then talked to those at the bar, and I actually got to experience a nice version of March for once. Now, was it because he was wasted? Yes, but I'll take it. This last table was playing some form of card game, and I was able to claim a free drink from Reyna. The kids of the town were all on the second floor planning a heist to find out more about the secrets Baylor was hiding in his locked room, and just overall this entire event of sorts really gave a lot more insight into the NPC's personalities, which was a really fun feature of the game itself. I'm not somebody who's always drawn to talking to the NPCs constantly, but this was definitely an eye-opener. Day 6, I woke up to two interesting mail pieces. One from Island, requesting I meet him and Errol at the museum to discuss reopening the mines, and one from Nora asking that I introduce myself to the vendors who were here for the Saturday market that Adeline had mentioned earlier. So I watered my plants and was off to see what the Saturday market was all about. The market had four vendors. Darcy's Cafe, where she sold hot drinks and sweets, Vera's stall where you could get a new hairdo, Louis's stall where you could find yourself a new outfit or accessory, and Mary's antiques full of furniture and home bits of all kinds. Now, I did purchase myself this oversized tee from Louis's, and what a mistake that was. I hated it. I do think it would be cool if you could try before you buy, because I kind of just wasted all of my money on that, but it is what it is. Now, a purchase I don't regret is this picnic blanket that I ended up purchasing from Mary's Antiques. It's adorable, but before I did that, I did head to the museum to meet up with Errol and Island to discuss the mines. Unfortunately for my mine-loving heart, Errol was not too keen on the idea of opening them up quite yet, so for now it looks like I need to continue to build up the museum collections to persuade him. On the way back to town, I took the long route through my farm and decided it was time to try out Errol's tip about moving furniture with my pickaxe. And I didn't quite think about the fact that the contents of the chest would not come with it, so we had to do a little back and forth from the old spot to the new spot. Not my best work. But from there, I headed back to town, purchased the cute picnic blanket I was talking about earlier, and gave Juniper a lilac for the quest I was given earlier. So we went to the bathhouse for Juniper to complete her strange concoction, and let's just say it didn't go so well. But she offered me a free soak in the bathhouse, and I recovered quite quick. I will say that this does feel the same as the sauna in Stardew Valley with its healing powers, but you're actually told about this one outright, and you do seem to have to pay for each session, other than the five free baths Juniper gave me for eating her weird soup that almost took me out completely. To end the night, I placed down the picnic blanket on my farm, and just like that, it was our seventh day in Mystria.
I woke up to rain and found that to apologize for nearly knocking me out the day before, Juniper had sent me a weather crystal ball per her dog Dozy's request, as well as a letter from Adeline to meet her at the manor. After placing the crystal ball down inside my house, I found that it basically served as a weather channel like the TV in Stardew Valley. On the way to the manor, I stopped to collect my rewards and check the quest board, and Ulrich was requesting a cool rock, so who was I to deprive him of such a thing? In return, he gave me a minecrate chair, so that was something. Definitely felt like I got the better end of the bargain. And after being told I was a bother from March, off to see Adeline I went. Entering the manor, Adeline and Valen were discussing the town's emergency stockpile. Adeline gave me 10 potato seeds to help resupply the town's food rations, and I was off. In planting the potatoes, I started to realize how little attention I'd paid to the crops up to this point, so I headed to the general store to see what kind of options I had to work with. But I had less than 300 tesserae. And this is where I also noticed that there was a bag upgrade for 1000, so I'd keep that in the background of my mind as well. Now, this may not have been the smartest decision, but I decided to buy a scarecrow, a cute plant, and like only one thing of seeds. At this point, I really was not sure if scarecrows served a purpose for anything other than aesthetics, but I didn't want a chance losing any of the potatoes for the town. And the potted flowers were really just because I thought they were cute. No other reason. I spent a lot of the day clearing out more of my farm, and I just want to point out that I am not a fan of how intense this storming rain animation is. I'm not sure it's an issue for everyone, but for me it was just a lot on the eyes and the heavy rain, thunder, and lightning didn't help either. But at least the sounds could be fixed in settings. For the latter half of the day, I decided to go take a better look at the beach area because I really hadn't explored it much. I found a cool shell and some bug called a beach hopper, which I could donate to the museum, so I went and did that before checking out the dig site to find another donatable item. It seems that the dig site refreshes every day or so, which is nice. To end the night, I stopped at the inn to talk to some townsfolk, and just like that, we had experienced one full week in Fields of Mystria. Now, I did go on to play the game for the remainder of spring, so here's what I was able to accomplish in that time. We were eventually able to convince Errol to reopen the mines, and throughout the season I was able to make my way down, fighting monsters and breaking rocks, just past floor 25, and on floor 20 we discovered a little bit of magic that may be further below with this water tablet that unlocked the next portion of the mines, and conjured up the priestess who said she was dragon. So that will be interesting in the future, I'm sure. And speaking of magic, Calderas also introduced us to the magic we would be using the game with a spell called Full Restore. According to the magic spells tutorial, various magic spells would be unlocked throughout the course of the game, which is definitely something that sets this game apart for me. Through the mines, I was able to find copper ore, which then meant I could now utilize the blacksmith's shop to forge tools and such, which meant that I was finally able to take Trian's advice and craft myself a fishing rod. I later also crafted a copper pickaxe, and later when finding iron, I was able to forge an iron axe. In the mines, I also discovered what happens when you run out of health, and throughout my time in the game I found out quite a few times what happens when you pass out. And unfortunately, there are negative effects, unlike what Melons had said previously. Now, this could be a change from an update that had been put out after she gave me the advice, or maybe she was just referring to the fact that you don't lose any items, but when passing out for whatever reason, the day will come to an end and you'll find yourself sleeping in the next day until 10am with health and energy depleted. Now, this may not be so horrible to some, but for me, with the days never feeling long enough as it is, and in this early game not feeling like there's enough energy to get everything done, I found it kind of detrimental. During this season, I also learned how crafting worked through Rias and his dad, and it's actually quite different from Stardew. From what I can tell, you can't just craft anything anywhere, you need to be at a crafting station, and each item you craft will take a certain amount of time out of your day. But the nice thing is that you can craft things without having the resources on you, and instead it will just account for what's in your overall possession. I was also able to complete a good chunk of the museum collection through the season through continually mining, catching bugs, and fishing. And speaking of fishing, the fishing mechanic used in Fields of Mystria is very similar to the one in Animal Crossing where it's really just about paying attention and being patient rather than the fishing mechanic in Stardew that is kind of more skill-based. I do think I personally prefer the Stardew fishing, but in all honesty, with everything going on in this game, I think the more simple fishing situation actually makes a lot of sense here. Now, something I was really excited for, as I am in every farming game, was the animals. And in this first season, I was able to unlock the possibility of getting some cows and chickens through repairing the mill in town which pushed Rias to offer coops and barns for me to build. 
Now that I'm saying this though, I'm not actually sure if they were available to buy prior, but this is at least when they were brought to my attention. And obviously, I needed to have a cow and a chicken, so I did pretty quickly purchase and build a barn, which maybe I should have gone with the coop first because all of that was cheaper, but oh well. I was still able to buy myself a cute brown cow and did even manage to buy a coop and a baby chicken in the first season, which might be one of my favorite parts of this game already. Something I feel like that may have been inspired by Harvest Moon and is actually not really present in Stardew is the whole cow varieties. In Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life, something I remember loving was that there were different kinds of cows you could get that were more rare and had different patterns and such, and that was my favorite thing as a kid that I spent the majority of my time trying to collect. And it looks like Fields of Mystria took that and put it on steroids because not only are there different patterns, but different colors too. Like, you're telling me I can get a purple cow in the future? I am obsessed. And it's not even limited to just the cows. There are different colored chickens as well. You already know I'm going to spend so much time collecting every single one of each and I can't wait. As I talked about earlier, the NPC's dialogue and involvement in the storyline really did make a huge impact. And through completing quests and playing through the season, I was able to bring the town's rank to copper at level 21, which according to Adeline had brought Mystria back on its feet and it was time to beautify. So, a group of the townspeople and I worked together to do a bit of cleaning up, and this allowed us to access the summit, which is, I think, a great place to wrap up this video and share some final thoughts. I think it is so easy to look at the premise of this game, being a pixelated farming sim, and think, wow, another Stardew Valley copy. Yes, it has some similar aspects like planting crops, tending to farm animals, romancing characters, fishing, and delving into the mines, but I feel like I can confidently say that this game holds its own. The feel of everything is honestly really different when you're playing, a lot of mechanics are quite different as well, and as a whole I believe it's taken a lot of inspiration from so many loved games to make the unique experience. I personally do see a lot of good aspects of Stardew, especially the freedom aspect of it all, but I really see so much more of Animal Crossing, Harvest Moon, and others that make it what it is. And I also feel like those who say that Fields of Mystria is a knockoff of Stardew need to remember that Concerned Ape, Stardew's creator, has openly shared that he took inspiration from other games as well. Now, a few quick notes. Fields of Mystria really doesn't seem to have any time constraints aside from the daily times, but things like quests haven't had any deadlines that I've seen. You can also leave items all around and they don't appear to despawn, which I personally love. A few small things I might change would be the storming animation, it's just way too much on my eyes. I'd also selfishly wish that the day wouldn't end when you lost all your health, but instead you would just be at the lowest levels of health and energy, similar to what's done in Stardew for the remainder of the day. And of course, I'd want Ulrich to be a dateable NPC. I'm sure there are other things I could mention here, but being that I've only made it through one season of the game, I'll leave it at that. But once again, I think that Fields of Mystria is an incredible addition to the farming RPG genre as it brings something new and exciting and I personally can't wait to continue checking it out. I would love to see this game on the Nintendo Switch in the future because I feel like it would be just perfect for that. And even though I do love Stardew Valley with all of my heart, I really did enjoy playing a new game for this video and getting to draw myself and some Stardew creators in the Fields of Mystria style was really fun. If you do want to see a video on my first year in Mystria, definitely let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. I'll also be sure to include links to all of the Stardew creators who so kindly took time to give me advice in the description, so definitely go follow them as well. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye!